I'm a self-taught photographer. I didn't have a where to have somebody that would guide me, you know, it's very isolated and, and probably uh, that gave me a lot of, you know, I could in introspection. I, I did all by myself. I do my, my way and, and if it works, fine. If not, that's probably experimental or intuitive. I got involved with, with a group of uh, photographers that we, we worked as photojournalists in the street during the coup, the military coup that, you know, it made us work like a militancy in a way, you know, in the street resistance. And well, you learn quite a lot, you know, in, about many, many things. And at the same time, I started doing my own like series I call, like essays, you know, on certain subjects that I wanted to find out, you know, like my main interest until in, now is I go on with identity, you know, that's my, my interest. I'm not uh, trying to please anybody or to show a point or, you know, stress something I, or make judgments about things. The Pinochet regime, like any other dictatorships, you know, make you very aware of power and the, the danger of power, the danger of militars. Definitely you had to be very, very aware of curfew, you know. You know, my, my film has been uh, open the camera, you know, that sort of things. But I wasn't arrested. I had this search in my house with, I had small children and, and it's very traumatizing, something like that, you know. And you learn how to move, you know, in, in those situations. You have to, to be extremely careful. And then on the other hand, uh, it, it makes you, f you know, the, develop a lot of solidarity and uh, learning about others and yourself too. But that's a long time ago. <laughs> now Chile is in democracy and we have a woman president. We're about to have new elections. During the dictatorship, women organizations were very active. And uh, of course I supported them very much, so I had to, I marched with them and I ran the other way and took photographs. Like other women photographers, we were very few, but they, they did, we all did the same, you know. Women participation in uh, those mo moments was very important. They, they experimenting, you know, the, and ve being very brave because m many of them were, you know, taken by the police and badly treated. Many women have been, you know, still no answer for where they are. We are st still working and marching up to now, you know, because we haven't been given a, an answer, proper answer. It's called Sleepers, Los Dormidos. That was part of one of my first, the first exhibition I had. Well, you had to be careful what you show in an exhibition. You, you could be censored immediately. So you had to work quite a bit with metaphors continuously, you know. And, and, and this scene in the street, you know, that so many people sleeping, you know, I, I was like depressed, you know, nobody was awo awake to, you know, what, what, what was happening. Now I see the, the same amount of people sleeping in the street, but I interpret that in a different way. It's an interpretation of, of you know, your daily life. For me, it was more important the, the, the fact that they were asleep, that people didn't, didn't, couldn't see what was happening or, or couldn't protest against reality. I am a woman, you know, I belong to a minority, as you can say. Uh, you identify with others very easily. Um, 
and marginals. I mean, it depends on what side you are. You know, if you are on the side of power, others are, are marginals. But the uh, minorities are majority, I think. So that's my point of view, you know, in general. Infarto del alma. Infarto is a stroke of the soul, you know, that's, that's the title I, I chose for that series. Uh, I like that very much. I, uh, it was my second like, research into a hospital, a psychiatric hospital. I started doing you know, photos of people in, in there for a while, and then I, I discovered that there were these couples, stable, you know, couples. And, and they liked it very much, you know, those patients of the hospital, when, when they learned that, that I, I had noticed that there were couples, you know, so it was a very wonderful rapport. And uh, I had permission, you know, from the directors of the hospital, and I even uh, sl stayed at, at the hospital for some days, or I rented a, a place, a room outside the hospital, because this is a small, very small town, far from Santiago, where I live. They were the first ones to, to see the exhibition, you know, the result of, of all that. And what they liked most, the patients, of course, were, were the, their photographs. Uh, curiously, they they wanted to get married, that's what they told me all the time. They wanted to get married and they, since they were not allowed, you know, this frustration, but when they saw the photos, you know, it became like a certificate of marriage, legitimized. I gave it to them and they loved it. I spent a lot of time in, in that hospital and I was terrified by those scenes, you know, like concentration camps, something that I, I had to photograph. It also worked as a benefit later on. They, they changed, they improved everything in the hospital. So at least from that point of view, it, it worked uh, something good for, for the hospital too. That's one of uh, the series I like very much. Manzana de Adan, which is Adam's apple. Is this what most transvestite covered it. The first thing they did cover was this part of their body. I became very close friends with them and I worked for about four and a half years because you don't have much time during the, the curfews and all that. So. First of all, I met the mother of two of, of, of uh, these brothers that were prostitute transvestites, which had been very seriously persecuted, you know. So everything they did was a very underground, and, and then even they had to leave Santiago to another a town, a city, Talca, where I was invited again by them, and, and I lived with them in the, in the brothel for a while. First of all, I, I, I need them to know exactly what I'm doing. So it takes some time to research, you know, to have some anthropological methods, and also to, to win their confidence and respect. I, I, first of all, I respect them very much. So it, it's like a dialogue. I was interested in prostitution. I really wanted to do some research. There was any possibility at all that I could find out about that, except by getting involved by myself. And I worked quite a bit with them, you know. But after a while, they made me promise not to show the pictures. So, you know, I, I couldn't go on. They were scared of family or children or mother or grandmother, you know, that sort of thing. They didn't want them to know that about their work. I've learned be the best things I've learned in my life, you know, like solidarity. I wanted to show women, Chilean women, you know, 
that was the title. I travel a lot in Chile. I move around quite a bit, so I wanted to do it from the very north to the extreme south. So you, we had desert, we have Altiplano, we have frontiers with Bolivia, Peru, so we are all mixed, you know. A very beautiful ethnic, group, ethnic groups. And of course, all uh, professions and all kind of works. Intellectuals or a nun or a diver. Kind of curious works sometimes. To elevate status, you know, that everything was so dignified to be an intellectual or the ex-president's wife, like Allende's wife, is also included in my work. Children is very natural. I worked so much with children. And then older people started in those days, fascinating. I was much younger than now. At this moment, I should have been part of the series of older people. But I, it was, again, like a way to, to learn about me. You know, it's like, like a mirror. How would I look? I'm reflecting myself, you know, in, in others. Passage of time has been something very unconscious. I do it constantly. It's like a biographical, you know. It's like, again, the self-portrait, you know. It's how people cope with, it, with their own body. That's learning. Nobody teaches you anything like that. It's a way, again, to you learn about yourself, about what you've never been told. Everything is very self-reflected or, or everything is my self-portrait. I was fascinated with these photographs as cemeteries, you know. What you think about the, this person who's died, you put this idealized photo, could have been he or her monster, and they have these wonderful pictures, you know. So I started photographing those photos, photos of photos, and uh, see how people think about their own dears, you know. I thought about a lot of Fayum, you know. The Fayum are those paintings on coffins in Egypt. So it's the idealization of, of this person, how they want to remember photography is still teaching me, you know, about humanity, you know, it's like a school, <laughs> school of, of uh, school for your soul.